Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Can We Please Talk podcast. As always, I'm Mike Leon. And looking like I just got my PGA Tour card, I'm Nick Severo. <laughs> it is true. You do kind of look like that. For the people watching on video, you are blessed again to see Nick coaching an NFL team. I mean, uh, showing up for this uh, podcast recording. Uh, I am in a stylish long sleeve, for those of you wondering. Um, folks, you can always, as always, check us out. Social media, IG, TikTok, at Can We Please Talk Podcast on Twitter, at Can We Please Talk Podcast. Please email us at Can We Please Talk Podcast at yahoo.com if you want to continue the conversation. Get something off your chest from some of the recent topics that we've had, because we've had a few, obviously, in the news and politics and education, learning about Israel-Palestine, the border. We had Chad Sanders to talk about his fantastic book and and you know uh, racism systemic racism in this country um you know one of the things we we talk about so many different topics on this show and we've done so many obviously in the news and politics which is really our bread and butter but um one of the things that i wanted to talk about and it's the basis for our topic today was really about um support groups awareness right about different issues i recently uh through somebody who listens to the program um, stumbled upon a support group uh, for breast cancer survivors. Um, and they do a great job of just, you know, injecting humor into the situation, right? And keeping it light and fresh and a lot of levity uh, for people that are going through something tough. And, and so that got me thinking about um, our guest for today, who is doing something in the awareness space, Christy Valdeseri, who is, uh, suffers from alopecia, and for those of you who don't know what alopecia is, alopecia obviously affects one in every 500 to 1,000 people in the U.S. It's, you know, it's like almost like male pattern, female pattern, baldness. Um, and, you know, the common form is like finding patches of hair and things like that, which is something that happened to Christy in her journey. She ended up losing a job over it. And, um, and it led her to kind of almost in essence be a spokesperson for this. And the reason I stumbled upon her was because uh, my niece suffers from this and she joined recently uh, Christie's support group, which is the Baltarage. And you could check it out, thebaltarage.com backslash join and all the work they're doing. It's a close knit group of supportive women who can kind of relate to every motion that comes with hair loss. And, you know, this the alopecia affects, you know, adolescents, kids. Um, it really doesn't have, you know, an age demo that it affects, but um, there's so many people going through it, you know, in the country. And she started the support group. Uh, she was the first SI swimsuit model who was bald to be featured in the magazine. She's really taken this as her mantle. Uh, and I love the work that she's doing. And I love the work that support groups are doing for people that are going through some of these afflictions. Nick, I know you know somebody that's that's personally uh, suffering from alopecia as well. But in terms of support groups, Christy's story, what do you make of it all? Yeah, I mean, well, first, I think it's it's always important that we have a space to talk about, you know, what what people are advocating for. You know, we, you know, one of the things that's a recurring trend of this show is, you know, we bring people on who are advocates for truth, you know, as it lives in the world of politics, in the world of media, sometimes in the world of education and matters of race, things like that. But I think it's also important to be aware of the various causes that people stand behind, you know, and Christy's a perfect example of that. And that's so I'm excited to hear from her today just to hear more of her story. But also, what does it mean to meaningfully understand what is the pursuit of understanding alopecia? Um, what is it like to live with that condition? Um, and also, how does she how does she frame this? Because you, you've mentioned a couple of times you know, you've said, like, suffer from. And yes, it's a condition, but it's not. To my as I understand it, um, it's not something you cure. So this is something that people have. It's something that's genetic. It's something that just simply, you know, lives within you. Um, like anything you have, whether you have, you know, hair, whether you don't have hair. Um, but I think there's a lot of opportunity. There's just a lot of uh, things I want to hear more about, not just like that condition itself, but, you know, what is its effect on her career and how is she able to to serve as a model. And this is especially important because she's modeling and letting people know that that isn't going to, you know, whether you have hair or not, like that doesn't define your beauty. And I think her journey also speaks to the redefinition of beauty, which I think as a country, as a, as a global civilization, we continue to think about that. We think of different kinds of models now that are featured in uh, Sports Illustrated um, in different mediums. So, and I think she just brings to light another 
another thing that people have that doesn't detract from their beauty, but actually helps us better define it for us as a, as a, as a society. Yeah, I think, and as you were saying all that, I, I think about, you know, we had Eric Legrand on the program, obviously, and he suffered from a major injury. But one of the things that I took away from Eric, and I take away from Christy as well, even though it's to a lesser extent, obviously, um, it's it's about this this mantle of, I will, I will take this on and be a shining beacon for other people going through it, like Eric was doing in the spinal cord community, when he realized, man, there's other people going through this that really don't have that outlet. They don't know how to really like have somebody in their corner supporting them. And that's one of the th great things that she does. She's done a bunch of these events. Um, I, I encourage people to check out the baltourage.com backslash joint. So you can check out all the great work that Christy is doing. We were so excited that Christy was able to join us on the program today. All right. Like I introed at the top, um, you know, our topic for today is really about awareness, specifically involving alopecia. And our guest for today is Christy Valdesiri. She's an SI swimsuit model, a dancer. She does everything, folks. Let's be honest. And but the big thing that she does is with the Baltarage. And you can check her, her all, all her work out at the Baltarage.com backslash join. Christy, Mike Leon, Nick Severi, thank you so much for hopping on the podcast with us. I'm so happy to be here, guys. Yeah. Thank you so much. Seriously, first off, and I mentioned it at the top about all the work you're doing with all these kids that are going through uh, and suffering from alopecia. Um, and I just, you know, my niece is a part of that group. So the smile that you bring to her when you're hanging out with her is something that warms my heart, brings a smile to my face. So thank you first and foremost for that. Um, as we get into this, um, I, I would love for you to tell our audience that may not be familiar with your story. Tell us a little bit about yourself and, you know, how alopecia affected your life back, I think, in your early 20s when you found it and ended up losing a job because of it. Take our audience through that. Yeah, so I'm from um, Philly, Pennsylvania, East Coast. I grew up there and I went to Penn State and my whole life I danced. I was a cheerleader. I went to college. I was in a sorority. I had hair. So I like was just a normal kid, really just fit in, had no idea even what a difference was. Like I was just such a normal kid with my parents were together, just very normal life. It felt. And then after I had graduated from college, like three weeks later, I found a bald patch on the top of my head. And I was like, it's probably from like the sun or pulling my hair up too tight. I was in a ballet company growing up. So I would always like slick back my hair, thought it was something like that and really wasn't worried. Like from the, at the beginning, I was like, oh, this is nothing. I felt invincible because nothing really had, had, I didn't really face any adversity growing up. So I was like, felt invincible in the moment. And I was 22. And then as the, I moved to New York and as the summer progressed, my hair loss continued to fall out. And I had no idea what it was. I went to a dermatologist in New York and they were like, this is crazy how much hair is falling out. I think it might be alopecia. And so then like you guys can imagine every waking moment I had, I'm like looking up alopecia. What is it? How do I solve it? How do I cure it? What is it? Where's it coming from? Um, and then I, it, I got steroid injections. Like a lot of people who go through hair loss, you go through this whole like panic mode of trying to solve it and cure it. And I got steroid injections. They put like 30 shots all over my head. And I was just trying to fix what was happening to me. And it kind of helped. My hair grew up, grew back a little bit. Um, I just went through a really bad breakup and then I booked a, my dream job on a cruise ship. So I was like on cloud nine. I had just, I was freshly single. I had just booked my dream job and my hair was kind of growing in. I still had some patches, but I was like seeing the future was bright. Everything was actually working out. And then within like six weeks of being on the cruise ship, I was fired out of nowhere. Like it was a very traumatic experience. They, the one, one man had the power and said she stood out and drew attention. We need her gone. And I'll never know why, but it felt like, cause I had some bald patches. I would wear hats. They had ordered me a wig. So that's how it felt. And I was like on cloud nine and then knocked right back to the ground. And I moved back to my parents for a little bit. And then within three weeks of losing that job, I lost all of my hair. I was completely bald in like three weeks and I was like, um, what do I do now? <laughs> like I lost my job. I just went through a horrible breakup. Now my hair's falling out. I moved out of my 
apartment in New York. And that's when I glued on a wig and moved to LA like almost four, four years ago now. And now I've been li- living out here for like four years. Beyond, you know, beyond the hair loss as you're experience, as you're going through L- early onset of alopecia, what were other things that you, were there other things that you noticed just physically that you were feeling? Um, nothing, nothing else. Like I had no, no other like conditions going on, just my hair loss, but I was, ex- had extreme anxiety. Like I said, prior to this, I was in a toxic relationship and I think the anxiety and the stress of that definitely played a part in like the onset of why I started to lose my hair. But it was, that was the only thing that I had going on, just the hair loss with my physical appearance. You know, Christy, one of the things that we were talking about before you hopped on the program um, and that I love about you is that you've kind of, you know, taken the mantle for people that are going through this and specifically adolescents. Um, What what was it that made you want to be for all intents and purpose? the spokesperson for this, like what, what was it that stood out to you that said, I need to advocate for this because I, you know, I'm going through it. What was, was there a specific moment that you can uh, share with us that led you to do that? Yeah. Well, I, I was, I was so alone and so sad and my personality is so upbeat and happy and energetic. And people have always explained me as that way. And this was like, really taking a toll on how I felt about myself and my life. Um, and I got to the point that I was like, why am I hiding this? And why am I, every time somebody would ask, Oh, is that a wig or, Oh, are you wearing extensions or what color is your real hair? It would ruin me. It would totally destroy me. And I got to the point that I was like, how can everyone's comment dictate how I feel about myself? And so I, I got to the point that I was like, you know what, I need to take the power back and and control how this is making me feel. And then beyond that, I've taught kids since I was like 14 years old. I've worked with kids my whole life. And so now that I have this opportunity to work with kids that look like me, and it's like a whole different relationship I have with them, that, that, that has just come out of me because I've done it my whole life. And I just, the more I work with the kids and the more I do different talks and everything, I've, realize like, why do these girls have to, these little kids just have to go around the world looking so different and having no understanding of why they look different. They just have to look different and they feel fine, but they have this thing that you can't miss it. When you look at us, like it's not something on their arm or their lower half of their body. It's on the top of their head and they just have to go through it alone and not understand why. And I just don't think that's fair. I think I'm in my mid twenties and this happened to me. So I can lead the way for them because I'm, I'm an adult and these are kids that have no understanding of it. Yeah, you know, obviously, as you're going through just, you know, what you're experiencing through that and just not just, you know, physically, but just like your life is just changing in front of you. And part of it seems to be like an outgrowth of what everyone sees with you, like physically. How do you sort of address that while also then becoming an advocate for others? Because I imagine like it's very easy to be in your respective head with all this and you know, trying to make sense of it and trying to you know continue to live, live the life that you have, but to also then become the advocate for others. Like, what is that experience like to to go from sort of looking within, but then standing up for those who, who who need someone to stand up for them? Well, that is a really good question, and I've noticed that has really it's very like in the forefront of my head lately, my mind, because I am trying to like stand up for all these people and be a support and support them and show up for them. Every time I teach dance twice a week, every time I have my mama meetups and my wine nights on zoom every month. And some days I, I, it's, it's really hard some days because it's not like I'm fully accepted and okay that I'm 27 and bald. And, and like, so yeah, I'm dealing with it myself, but I just, so days on days that I have an off day, I try to like pull away from social media a little bit, like come into my own and be with myself and do things that lift me up and not be not, I'm always there for everyone, but some days I have to pull back a bit and not maybe respond to all my DMS or my messages or my emails and just take a day to be like, okay, I'm feeling it today. So I really think it's just being aware of it and, and addressing it. And even though people might look at me, like I'm confident and I have it all with uh, owning my look, it's, I'm a human and I'm experiencing it as just equally as them. I'm just 
trying to balance it as well. So there's not really an answer. It's hard some days to, to do both. Cause I am still living it. It's not, it's not gone away. I deal with this every day. You know, we kind of live in a society that is, you know, so judgmental, specifically from the fashion and beauty. I mentioned you were an SI swimsuit model and the first one who was bald to appear in the magazine. Um, what is your message to somebody that may be listening to this program, has a kid that's going through it, or even somebody that's, you know, going through it themselves personally? Get, take us a little bit inside of like what your message is to those kids or people that are affected with this. Uh, my message is that like, we have to, at our core, be who we want to be and be ourselves, right? When the whole world forever is trying to put us in a box and have us look this way and go to college and get a job and marry this person. Like that's the way that the society makes you feel like you have to do exactly what everyone's doing. And then when it, and it, when you don't know any different, you're like, oh, that's just what life goes happens. And then when you go through something that totally flips your world upside down, it's like, wait, why do I have to be blonde to be defined as beautiful? So I'm just, I would tell anyone that like, keep going, don't give up, like keep going, keep going. And it, it's, it's not always going to be as painful and as hard as it is right now. And that you have to stay true to who you are and express who you are because we, everybody, everybody has something special to give. So maybe I really believe, like I wholeheartedly believe only special people have alopecia or have hair loss. Like, I don't believe it's a mistake. I think that we're like little droplings of angels that are like, I just walking on the street, people are learning something by seeing me bald. So I, and same with Adriana and little girls, when they see someone bald, like you, they are experiencing something personally just by seeing that. And I think that that is making the world be more beautiful, even though we have to be the ones at the brunt of it experiencing it every day. You know, a few months back, we had Eric Legrand on. You know, Eric obviously was a former player at Rutgers, um, you know, another member of Are You like, like Mike and myself. Uh, and, and obviously, you know, one of the things Eric's most known for is, you know, suffering a career ending injury leading to paralysis. And obviously, now Eric's doing a ton of work uh, raising awareness for a spinal cord injury. And Eric had said something very similar to Christy, what you just said, the idea of being chosen or like reframing, you know, what people may view as an affliction, but actually potentially a gift or an opportunity to, to transform the world. And as I bring that up, something to, something I'm curious about from you is as you've gone through this journey, you know, you've, we've talked about beauty for the last couple of minutes. How has that concept been redefined for you? And what does your work look like now? Like, how do you, accept that role to be one of those people that continues to help redefine beauty for, for the society, the rest of the world and such. Well, like I was saying, like when not, when nothing's happened to you, you like, I really believe humans feel invincible until they're like put in their place or they go through something. And it's like, wait, I'm, I'm not invincible. I'm a human that anything could happen to me. And so I like what you said that, that, that person you're talking about felt like they, this, it was a gift. And when you experience something traumatic, the only, like we have one life. So the only way I believe to look at it is like to flip the narrative and like see it as a gift, or it's just going to destroy me and I'm not going to be able to fully live my life. But as for beauty, like I, I don't even say it just to, because I'm bald, like I like wholeheartedly believe that beauty comes from within, like you can meet someone and and feel their energy and feel their goodness in their heart and their intentions. And if they're bringing good to the world and being themselves, like that is hands down the most beautiful thing, men, women, kids, adults, whatever you are, whoever, whatever you look like, wherever you're from, whatever you believe in, like if you're bringing good and you're being your true authentic self, like that is the definition of beauty to me. I love it. I love everything about it. You know, one of the things we were talking about before you came on was the baltarage.com back backslash join and how people can, it's really a support group for everybody. So why don't you tell a little bit, uh, uh, our audience, a little bit about that site, um, how people can reach out to you if they want to join this support group. Yeah. So Baltaraj, I created like um, a year and a half ago about kind of around the, uh, when the pandemic happened and it's just grown so much. A lot of it is word of mouth. Like I'm here today from word of mouth from Adriana's mom. Um, but it's, I teach dance classes every week to girls ages. There's like a little three-year-old in it up to like 12, 13. 
And it's so special because they come on and they see me who looks like them. And then seven or eight or 10 other girls that look like them. I teach fitness classes all also in Baltarage. And these are open for everybody, but most of my people are bald or have hair loss. And then we have different um, events every month. So we have a mama meetup. So all the moms um, who are in Baltarage active come to Zoom and we talk about all topics that like a mom will be like the other day, someone called my little girl, a boy on the playground and seven of the other moms or 10 of the other moms are like, I've experienced that. And it just, it's a open, comfortable, free, accepting space to be like, I'm going through this and everybody else can a hundred percent relate. And I have the same thing with wine nights with women who have hair loss. And we just go on and talk about all things under the sun. And it now feels like they're my family. Like I know that word's overused, but I really feel so connected to these people, their moms, their siblings, my friends that are bald. Um, and then we'll do different events um, on top of that. Like sometimes we do, we've done a spa night. We did like a makeup tutorial for the girls. We've done a fashion show, a talent show. I just want to give these girls an opportunity to express themselves and feel comfortable and um, feel like they are perfect exactly how they are. But yeah, you, uh, it's open to anyone, anyone that is related to hair loss. And most of it is women and girls, but I'm always open to accepting little boys and men as well. Christy, we can't, we'd be remiss in not discussing the, you've been a model for SI. You know, something that Mike and I have not achieved just yet, <laughs> but um, I applied, but I, I don't know. The operative word <laughs> is yet for Mike, though. Um, but Christy, <laughs> what was that experience like? And what, you know, what conceptions did you have about being an SI model and what um, what was true and what did you find was different in, throughout that experience? Yeah. So when I first uh, it's just an open call that anybody can submit. And I remember when I was growing my hair back. I was wearing a wig right when I moved out to LA and I saw my friend post and she was going through the process. And I vividly remember telling myself, like, I can't do this until my hair grows back. I would love to do that, but I have to wait till my hair grows back. And my hair was growing and it was growing. Um, and then out of nowhere, as alopecia does, it fell out again out of nowhere. And I went through like two weeks of really, really depressed and really sad. And like, I was posting pictures of my hair growth. I was talking about how much it was growing and all of that. So I had all of this weight on it and then it fell out and I felt like I was a failure and all those emotions. And then I shaved my head and I grabbed my friend. And I said, we're going to the beach. I'm making this video. I'm taking my wig off. Don't let me think twice. I'm submitting as a bald girl. Let's do it. And then next thing you know, they invited me down to Miami. Um, I walked in the runway show and I walked down the runway with a blonde wig and ripped off the blonde wig at the end of the runway and the crowd went wild. And that's still the most iconic moment of my life. And it was just so empowering. And then when I was selected to shoot for them as the first bald model, I just felt so myself. It was the most amazing experience. It wasn't ever, oh, Christy, she doesn't have eyelashes. So we have to do this or, oh, the bald girl. Like it was just Christy. And so much of my life, I feel like I have to explain and overcompensate because of the industry I'm in, I have to like, let them know my eyebrows, my eyelashes, my, like, I always feel like I have to explain, but with SI, I just felt so myself and so comfortable and so accepted the way, the way that I was. You know, Christy SI, I mentioned to you, I saw you on good morning America. A uh, similar question that we asked, you know, to Eric Legrand, like Nick was alluding to earlier. Um, what's been like a cool moment for you from this experience? Because obviously Maybe you wouldn't have gotten all of this without it, but is, is there been a cool moment for you where you say, oh, wow, I can't believe like I was on Good Morning America. Like what, what have you taken away as your coolest moment from, from being an advocate for this? Probably the moment that I, like I did the shoot for SI, I walked on the runway, but the moment that I, it was last July, went to the magazine store, like one of the iconic magazine stores in LA and I opened the magazine and I had a centerfold and saw myself in the magazine. Like that was the best moment ever. It's like one thing to do the photos and then maybe I didn't even see them yet, but see them digitally, but like to have a magazine and open it up. And like, I'm on a whole spread of two pages and like something that traumatized me and like destroyed me. I have made into a beautiful, powerful thing. I just remember opening it and I was filming myself and I just kept saying like, when there's a will, there's a way. That's how I felt in that moment. Like for all the sleepless nights of crying my eyes out, like it made it so worth it to see that myself in one of the most iconic magazines 
being bald and being so proud of it. That's awesome. I, I, I mentioned this uh, before because it's a personal issue to me, obviously, because of my relationship with Adriana's mother, um, like I mentioned to you, and, and, and all the work that you do to really instill confidence in her in something that, you know, I feel like, you know, you know, we all know how we've all been kids. We know how kids get picked on for certain things. So I think all the work that you're doing is so fantastic for these kids as being a beacon for them to say, listen, I will be here to support you, uh, whatever you're going through. And I love that you're taking it on your shoulders. I just think that's, you know, no, I, I commend you for that, Christy. I really do. I wish you the best and continued success. Uh, Baltaraj.com backslash join. You can check out all the work that Christy is doing there. Christy, thank you so much for coming on the podcast today and sharing your story with us. Thank you. And thank you for the, the kind words and for highlighting myself and my journey in Baltaraj in such a beautiful way. It means a lot to me and to the girls. All right. That was Christy Valdeseri. Like we mentioned, you know, Nick and I, we do this all the time, right? The guest was fantastic. The guest was fantastic. They get like, <laughs> folks, if, if, if you can't, if you can't get, uh, if you can't have sympathy or empathy um, for all the work that she's doing, the kids, adolescents that are going through this and how she's really like using her voice to say to kids, look, it's, it's going to get hard. I'm going to be here for you. I'm going to be here to support you. You can you can lean on me. Join the ball tourage. You know, she talked about the Wine Wednesdays that she does. Actually, is it Wine Wednesdays? I forget what it is. But um, all the great work that she's doing with these Zoom classes, teaching dance to these kids. You know, I, I was checking out her IG story earlier today. And it's, you know, she has a different kid on each week, you know, to really spotlight them. Like, I just think that's great, man. Like, I, I, look, I care about the kids. Like, it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's it, you asked her the question about the, the imaging, right? Like a body shaming and like what we're supposed to look like. You know, like we have this perception of like a, a, an SI model is supposed to have blonde hair, she mentioned, you know, and things like that. Like, why does it have to be defined like that? So I just love a lot of the work that that, that Christy is doing. And again, it's personal for me because, you know, it's somebody that I know and love that's that's growing up with this. So I'm, I'm, I can see the difference in confidence that she has going forward after meeting Christy. Nick, Nick, what would you make of, of Christy? Let's sum, sum it up here for the people as you as you do always so well. I think people that people that come on our show, and we've been fortunate to have so many people do this, but you know, people who come on with a passion to transform the world, you know, in in whatever way they choose to, and and Christy's one of those people, and I I, I am just blown away by her work. Um, you know, as she told us in her story, this is not easy. I mean, there's a lot of the journey she's still on, just being comfortable in her own skin. You know, she's talking like some days are not great for her, but she still powers through that. And I shout out to her vulnerability, you know, because I think on one side of it, there's so many kids benefiting just from her, from her incredible work and putting herself out there. Um, But at the end of the day, she's still a human being. You know, there's going to be some days where she is that powerful advocate and she has got the backs of kids who are go, who, who have this condition, who have alopecia. And then there's other days where it's like, this is a tough, this is a tough day. That's just, and that's just life. And I imagine, you know, anyone who does this incredible work, who is raising awareness to something that they deal with, sometimes what they deal with is going to win that day. You know, and I think Christy shared that. So I think it's, I'm just grateful again, like, like everyone that comes on the show, just grateful to hear their story, but also, you know, how they're contributing to making the world a better place, which honestly, I think is one of the sort of unwritten missions of our program is informing, entertaining, but making sure people leave with a better understanding of what our guests and what, you know, what field they're in. And you know, for anyone who knows someone who has alopecia, who they themselves may have alopecia, and this this episode's for you and it's about recognizing beauty in all spaces and and chris does an amazing job of that so well said my friend um in the show notes page of tonight's episode you can check out baltaraj.com backslash join boy i keep saying backsplash but it's actually backslash uh so baltaraj.com backslash join uh click on the link in our show notes whatever audio podcast platform you're listening to right now and you can get involved with christy's work um you know before as you were mentioning earlier um charlie bill nueva a former nba player who suffered from alopecia you know and there was jabs that certain players took at him 
you know, when he was going through this. Um, and I thought about that, you know, and it's true. Like when you think about uh, this, this, this affliction doesn't really have, you know, like a target age range, but it does affect more kids and adolescents um, m- more so than, than older adults. And, you know, that's just tough, man, especially when you're going through your formative years and, and dealing with something like this. So I just love that Christy continues to empower um, the people that are in this support group, I encourage people to check out baltaraj.com backslash join. Even if you don't know anybody going through this, check out the cause and some of the great work that Christy is doing um, and on that online website. And speaking of online websites, as always, youtube.com. You can check out all of the video of our episodes. Nick is smashing the subscribe button like Thor with a hammer. Uh, audio podcast platforms, you know them by now. Apple, Spotify, Google. Check those out. Please, social media. We mentioned at the top of the program, IG, TikTok, at Can We Please Talk Podcast, and on uh, Twitter, at Can We Please Talk. And shoot us an email. Can we please talk podcast at yahoo.com? You just heard the topic tonight. If you want to get involved with Christy's things and you want to reach out to her directly, um, if you want to recommend a topic, sign up for our Patreon page and you can become a Patreon subscriber, listen to exclusive bonus content, not only from this episode, but other episodes. You can recommend fan topics, get show merchandise. We got it all, folks, and we want to share it with you guys. Thank you so much for listening, watching. As always, I'm Mike Leon. Nick Saberi. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a good one.